Why do we age? Almost all organisms will age, from the mighty elephant to even single-celled bacteria. The only exceptions to this hard and fast rule are Keanu Reeves and the Hydra, a freshwater animal that literally cannot age. Named after the mythical, many-headed Greek beast that regenerates its heads when severed, Hydra will literally do the same. But for the vast majority of living things, why is aging inevitable? And if natural selection promotes survival of the fittest, why hasn't evolution pushed for the creation of more immortal super beings like Keanu Reeves? If we are talking about ultimate fitness and survival, the guy can literally defend himself with a fucking pencil. Theory number one. Getting old is hardwired into our DNA. The implications of the theory go something like this. If we are programmed to age, all we have to do is pinpoint those genes and turn them off, and thus unlock the secrets of everlasting life. It's kind of like the faster acceleration Mercedes locks behind a $1,200 annual subscription. The car can technically accelerate faster, but is intentionally throttled. Does life really have its own built-in paywall? Can someone please genetically override this stupid thing so we are not stuck getting old and wrinkly? But how realistic is this theory really? Why would evolution build in aging? How does that benefit anyone? Well, some say it helps prevent overcrowding. With an overpopulated world, there's not enough food and resources to go around, and you'd end up with catastrophic collapses in entire ecosystems. It's an interesting theory, but studies show that there's very little evidence that getting old is something that actually happens in the wild. Apart from humans, most animals die from a million other reasons before a supposed kill switch gene is needed to thin out the population. And if you think about it, if there was really such a kill switch gene, that would be the perfect opportunity for animals with mutations that break this kill switch gene to exploit this inherent disadvantage. Eventually, everyone with the kill switch gene would age out and die, while the newly evolved, never aging animal without the kill switch gene would survive and thus be more likely to pass on their genes. Eventually, the kill switch gene would slowly disappear from the species until everyone is again immortal. But again, basically no one is. So that brings us to theory number two. Your genetic programming does not care for you to live forever. Yes, while you may want to live forever, your genes just want you to live long enough to get laid and make a baby. Anything beyond that is just extra, superfluous, and overindulgent. You think your genes care that you want generational wealth to be famous, to rule the world? Mm -mm. Nope. Okay, but still, why can't we get laid, make babies, and still just live forever? What's up with that? Well, short answer to that is genetically speaking, living forever is extremely costly. To understand, let's imagine a game of survival. In this game, you control a clan of robots. Let's call it Clash of Robots Clan. To win, your robots have to survive for at least 1,000 years. Only problem is, they are made of cheap iron and will rust and break down in just a few years. Hmm, what to do? There is an upgrade that gives your robots a titanium diamond-plated alloy that never rusts, but it costs 1 million gems. Unfortunately, you only have 1,000 gems, and with that amount, you can only upgrade your robots to the level of steel and force plating, which lengthens their lifespan to 130 years. That's an improvement, but still doesn't allow you to win the game. Okay, how are you supposed to win then? There is another upgrade that gives them the ability to build new copies of themselves, but it comes at a steep price of 500 gems. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, that could be a game changer. Only problem is these copies are tiny and completely vulnerable, requiring years of care before they are fully functional and about 250 of your gems. That leaves you with only 250 left over. And with 250, you can only upgrade your robots to rust-resistant copper plating, giving the robots an average lifespan of 70 years. Not ideal, but at least it gives you a chance to win the game. As your original robots rust and break down, the new crop of baby robots will start to come online. They'll come pre-programmed with the upgrade and be able to make the next generation of robots before they rust. In 70 year long sprints, your tiny species of robots slowly crawl to the 1000 year mark. If it wasn't apparent already, this is the stupid game all living organisms are playing. No one has 1 million gems in real life. Your body is constantly deciding what to do with a set of limited resources. You would think evolution would just pick those that don't age because organisms that are fit, young, and strong 
forever would have a huge advantage and pass on their genes much more efficiently. However, just like what is implied in the robot game, one popular theory posits that the ability to reproduce requires a large consumption in resources that actually decreases the amount of years you have to live. Thus, the ones that are more fit in the reproductive sense actually live shorter lives due to using up more resources to reproduce. Making an entire new organism is a very costly investment that only the fittest and strongest of animals can do. Being able to get pregnant and successfully carry a baby for nine months requires a certain level of baseline health, and even then can be a miserable experience. Now add on top of that the fact that for most of human history, you'd have to survive all of this while trying to avoid the lions and other predators wanting to eat you. This reminds me of a show called Hunter x Hunter, where a boy exchanges his future life energy for more power in the present in order to defeat the enemy in front of him. As a result, he becomes an adult immediately and shortens his life by several decades in a very emotional example of how everything comes at a price. This kind of phenomenon has actually been discovered by scientists and worms. While there is a mutation, scientists have discovered that when turned on, these worms double their lifespan. While that sounds amazing, as a result of this mutation, these worms are unfortunately much weaker and less fit in the reproductive sense. These longer living worms lay less eggs and are less likely to pass down this mutated genome. Fascinating. Okay, so with that in mind then, if you're a wild animal looking to maximize your chances for survival and for reproductive capacity, there seems to be an obvious advantage to front-loading your power, especially given the competitive cutthroat world you live in, where almost anything and everything out there that can kill you will kill you. Because look, if you know most of your friends and family are going to die at a young age and we're never going to live that long anyway, why spend resources on ensuring that you get rid of aging too, right? It just wouldn't be a priority in the evolutionary sense. You have more important things to worry about, like making sure you don't die from starvation, from freezing temperatures, from hungry predators. Yeah, your body's busy. Call back later. Take wild mice for example. More than 90% of wild mice die within their first year of life. Any investment to prolong life only benefits about 10% of the mouse population. Thus, natural selection is kind of powerless to influence survival at older ages because most die before this even matters. This brings us to theory number three the wear and tear hypothesis. We've been quietly alluding to this theory this entire time, and naturally, you already have a strong intuition for this as well. Almost all things in life, alive or inanimate, will break down and fall apart over time. Think sandcastles melting into the ocean, buildings falling into disrepair, and cars that need their tires replaced. Any upkeep to keep something to be the exact way it is requires an investment of energy and resources and sometimes may be impossible altogether. For example, think about a piece of pie. Leave a piece of pie out in the open. Come back in a few hours and it will already look kind of icky. Quite literally, it may be impossible to keep a piece of pie fresh forever. From mold to bacteria to other hungry third parties, at some point in time, it is an easier task to literally plant and grow a new apple and bake a new pie than it is to try and preserve the one in front of you already. And that's because of something called entropy. The Oxford Dictionary defines entropy as a law of physics, representing the gradual decline into disorder. Entropy works on humans as well. As we make our way through life, entropy manifests in various ways. This is the stuff you've heard before. Free radicals and oxidative stress from smoke, UV light, pollution, to abnormal protein deposits in the brain in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. In the end, all of this may fall to the level of our DNA, the foundation of our existence, the blueprint of our lives. Not only is this blueprint used in daily activities in the production of proteins and to make new cells, this blueprint needs to get physically copied and duplicated over and over and over and over again, ad nauseum. Over enough replications, that poor blueprint is going to get wrinkled, dusty, and faded. Unless you have built-in repair mechanisms to fix all of that, that DNA is going to be riddled with errors. What does error mean in terms of DNA? Cancer. 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 Getting old and getting cancer go hand in hand. Your body actually has protective mechanisms in place, evolved to delete the occasional dangerous damaged cells in your body. 
When we are young, these errors don't happen very often, but when they do, boy, are you glad these mechanisms are in place to correct for them. Sometimes, the cells are told by the immune system to commit suicide in something called apoptosis, or programmed cell death. Other times, the less costly alternative is to induce a permanent state of cell cycle arrest called cellular senescence. Just like when an unruly child acts out and disrupts the class, the teacher puts them in timeout. Except, well, in this case, the timeout lasts forever. Studies show that stress can actually induce premature senescence, which makes sense as stress cells are more prone to making DNA errors and thus allowing for them to continue replicating would likely lead to cancer, 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 cancer. But do you see the problem here? Well, it's good to have these mechanisms to protect ourselves from cancer as the effects of entropy and DNA damage build up. If half of your cells have committed suicide while the other half is stuck in a permanent state of arrest, you aren't going to look so hot. That is, you are going to look like this. In 2002, Tyner and his colleagues elegantly demonstrated this exact trade-off between aging and cancer in mice. By increasing the activity of the p53 gene, the mice were much less likely to get cancer. But at the same time, these mice also aged a lot faster as their bodies prematurely shut down cell division or killed off cells in a variety of tissues and organs altogether. So what is the optimal investment of resources then? If we combine theory two and three together, it appears the optimal investment in DNA repair is something that protects you up until right after your prime fertility season, just long enough for you to make a few rounds of babies, and maybe just a tad bit more after that so that you can ensure their survival and maturation. But after that, at least from a gene pool standpoint, you become absolutely useless. To continue to preserve your flame in the darkness of the world would become exorbitantly costly and meaningless. Too much damage would have occurred to your genes at this point that trying to pass these subpar error-ridden genes to the next generation would be exceedingly detrimental. According to a 2012 study in Nature, the older the father is when he has children, the higher the probability those kids will inherit mutations that lead to autism and schizophrenia. Again, returning to the previous analogy, at some point it is easier to grow new apples and bake a new pie than it is to try and preserve the pie you've already made. And that is likely why different animals have different natural lifespans. It just wouldn't make sense for a mouse to invest in the level of DNA maintenance enjoyed by humans as they simply don't need it. A mouse becomes sexually mature in just 35 days of life. Thus, as the months go by, the evolutionary pressure to repair and preserve their DNA line rapidly diminishes. By the time they are just one and a half years old, these elderly mice already showcase multiple senescent biological markers associated with being old and frail. Further evidence for this theory is found in Werner syndrome, a rare disease that causes humans to rapidly age. We did a video on this not too long ago, so check it out to learn more. In this disease, a genetic mutation breaks one of the body's normal mechanisms for DNA repair, and because of this, widespread genome instability, cell aging, and increased cancer risk result. What about the hydra? How is this animal able to live forever? In fact, it looks like they are capable of undergoing complete regeneration from almost any part of their body. Body. Doesn't that break the theory altogether? Well, there's still a lot to learn. Scientists believe it has something to do with the fact the Hydra is completely made of stem cells whose only job is to make more copies of itself. It is thought that the Hydra replaces the cells of its body every 20 days. With such a unique cell composition, it is likely they have much more robust DNA repair mechanisms in place compared to the cells of our body, whose roles and functions have become increasingly narrowed and specialized, losing the regenerative and repair abilities of its precursor stem cells. A brain cell is built to be able to send robust electrical signals. A heart cell is built to contract efficiently and pump blood. A kidney cell is built to filter the blood, and so on and so forth. Until we can figure out a way to turn on these repair mechanisms again and accelerate DNA repair, our only hope for immortality is to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If this video gets enough interest, I'll continue these series discussing the mysteries of aging and review the science of various health fads out there, from antioxidants to fasting to even cryogenics. Until next time, my friends, if you enjoyed today's video, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Studies show that hitting the subscribe button makes you two times more likely to repair damaged DNA. Okay, my friends, until next time, stay humble, stay healthy, stay fresh. Peace.